Hello, and welcome to Critical Environment Technologies video tutorial series, Gem Calibration. In this tutorial, I will demonstrate the calibration procedure for the Gem Multipurpose Self-Contained Gas Detector Type D. In order to calibrate the Gem, you will need a calibration kit, gas cylinders with a sufficient amount, correct concentration and type of gas, and a voltmeter with hook-on leads. It is also important that you make sure the sensor you are calibrating has not passed its life expectancy. In this demonstration, I am using a GEM Type D that has one internal carbon monoxide sensor and one remote propane sensor. Each sensor must be calibrated individually. The model I am using also has an optional display which allows me to see and hear the status of the calibration process. If your model does not have the optional display, you will need to rely on the beeps that you hear during calibration. Also notice on the front of the gem, there are two LED lights labeled SENS1 and SENS2. The light that is lit indicates which channel is in use. SENS1 is channel 1 and SENS2 is channel 2. With the gem powered on and in normal operation, the display shows the current detected level of each gas in an alternating fashion. There are three steps to follow in the gem calibration procedure, first for channel 1 and then repeated for channel 2. Step 1 is to set the cal gas value for channel 1. To calculate the value that needs to be set, you must first use the formula shown on the screen. The values we know are the factory set cal gas default for CO is 100 ppm and the CO sensor range is 200 ppm. Using the formula, we are able to calculate that the cal gas value for CO is 2 volts. There are two test points with a range of 0 to 4 volts inside the gem. The volt setting provides a reference point that the unit understands and when related to a PPM concentration, it creates useful information for us. Although the factory default is set to 2 volts and corresponds to 100 PPM of cal gas concentration, we strongly recommend that you calculate the cal gas value to ensure this setting hasn't been changed in the field by another technician using a different cal gas concentration. Likewise, in a situation where you might have a different cal gas concentration in your toolkit, you will need to use the formula to calculate the correct voltage so the unit knows what reference to use. For example, if you are using a 50 ppm concentration, you will calculate that the cal gas value should be set to 1 volt. Open the gem and find the test points TP1 and TP2. Attach your voltmeter and keep it attached until the entire calibration procedure is complete. Find jumper bank 6 and jumper bank 7. J6 has 4 pins and is used to choose the channel you want to configure. J7 has 9 pins and is used to tell the unit to perform an action related to the channel you chose on J6. Both jumper banks should have pin 1 covered with a jumper. This is the resting position and the factory default setting. To set the cal gas value, you must first tell the unit what channel number you are configuring. To configure channel 1, which is the CO sensor, move the J6 jumper from position 1 to position 2. Then you must tell the unit what action to perform. To set the cal gas value, you move the J7 jumper from position 1 to position 2. Next, find the two push buttons on the circuit board. Watch the voltmeter. If it does not display the correct voltage, press the push buttons up or down to adjust the voltage to the correct value. If your unit has a display, it will show 100 ppm when the voltmeter reads 2 volts. Now move the jumpers from J6 and J7 back to the resting position 1. This completes setting the cal gas value for channel 1. Step 2. Setting the null calibration for channel 1. First move the jumper on J6 from position 1 to position 2 to tell the unit you are configuring channel 1. Attach the regulator to the cylinder, insert the calibration adapter into the sensor opening in the front of the enclosure door and open the regulator valve fully allowing the zero gas to flow over the sensor. 
the voltmeter reading may decrease slightly. This is an indication that there is residual CO present and setting the null calibration with zero air is important. Continue the flow of gas and move the jumper on J7 to position 3 to tell the unit you are doing the null calibration procedure. You will hear one beep. If your unit has a display like this one, you will see CO null displayed. Please note, during this time, the value on the voltmeter will not be correct until you move J7 back to the resting position after calibration is complete. If the unit starts to beep repetitively at one second intervals, or the display shows underflow or overflow, you need to determine if the sensor is more than 30% out of calibration, or if the incorrect gases or gas values have been applied. If the correct gases and gas values have been applied, you need to press the up and down push buttons at the same time to force calibration. The unit will beep twice to let you know the calibration procedure has started. Leave the gas flowing over the sensor until you hear three beeps, about two to three minutes, indicating the null calibration procedure is complete. Move the jumpers from J6 and J7 back to their resting position 1 and remove the gas. The voltage reading should be close or at zero. The unit returns to normal operation. This completes step 2, calibrating the null or zero value for channel 1. Step 3, setting the span gas calibration for channel 1. Remember in step 1, we set the cal gas value to 2 volts which corresponds to 100 ppm of CO. It is very important that you make sure the CO gas cylinder you are using has the corresponding concentration to the cal gas value you have set. Setting the calibration span gas is very similar to setting the null calibration procedure we just went over. First you need to move the jumper on J6 from position 1 to position 2 to tell the unit you are configuring channel 1. Start the flow of span gas at a rate of 0.5 liters per minute. A fixed rate regulator is recommended. The voltmeter reading should increase from zero, and if it moves significantly towards the cal gas value setting you, figure, you configured in step one, this indicates the sensor sees the CO gas and you should be able to calibrate successfully. Continue the flow of gas and move the jumper on J7 to position 4. You will hear one beep. If your unit has a display, it will show CO span. Please note, during this time, the value on the voltmeter will not be correct until you move J7 back to the resting position after calibration is complete. Same as during null calibration, if the unit starts to beep repetitively at one second intervals, or the display shows underflow or overflow, you can override by pressing the two push buttons at the same time to force calibration. The unit will beep twice to let you know the span gas calibration procedure has started. Leave the gas flowing over the sensor until you hear three beeps, about two to three minutes later, indicating the span gas procedure is finished. The display will show span done. Move the jumpers back to their resting position 1 and remove the span gas. This completes calibrating the span gas for channel 1. Now we must go through the same three steps to calibrate channel 2, which is the propane sensor. The process is almost identical to what we just went through with channel 1. To begin, you must calculate the cal gas value for propane. We know the factory set cal gas default for propane is 20% LEL, and the sensor range is 50% LEL. Therefore, the cal gas value for propane is 1.6 volts. To set the cal gas value, move J6 jumper from position 1 to position 3 to tell the unit you are configuring channel 2, and move the J7 jumper from position 1 to position 2. Watch the voltmeter. If it does not display 1.6 volts, or the correct voltage that corresponds to your gas concentration, press the push buttons up or down to adjust the voltage to the correct value. If your unit has a display, it will show propane 20 when the voltmeter reads 1.6 volts. 
Now move the jumpers back to their resting positions. This completes the setting the cal gas value for channel 2. The big difference between calibrating channel 1 and channel 2 in this exercise is that during null and span calibration for a propane sensor, a humidifier must be used so an accurate reading is achieved. A humidifier has three parts, a tube, a sponge, and a top. Wet the sponge and place it inside the tube and replace the top. Attach the regulator with a humidifier to the zero gas cylinder and the calibration adapter to the propane sensor. To set the null calibration for channel 2, move the J6 jumper from position 1 to position 3 and the J7 jumper from its resting position 1 to position 3. The unit will beep once. Open the regulator and flow the zero gas over the sensor. You will hear two beeps that lets you know the calibration procedure has started and about two to three minutes later you will hear three beeps and the display will show null done. Move the jumpers back to their resting position and remove the gas. The unit returns to normal operation. To set the span gas calibration, move the J6 jumper from position 1 to position 3. Attach the appropriate concentration of span gas for the cal gas value you set for propane, which in this exercise is 20% LEL. Attach the regulator with the humidifier to the span gas cylinder and the calibration adapter to the propane sensor. Move J7 jumper from its resting position 1 to position 4. The unit will beep once. Open the regulator and flow the span gas at a rate of 1.0 liters per minute. You will hear two beeps indicating the calibration procedure has started and in about two to three minutes you will hear three beeps and the display will show span done. Move the jumpers back to the resting position one and remove the gas. The unit returns to normal operation. This completes the calibration procedure for channel 1 and channel 2 of the GEM type D. Best practice after calibration is to do a bump test for both sensors to make sure the gas readings are accurate and the sensors have been calibrated properly. If you would like more information or in-depth training, you can sign up to take our service training courses. Please visit us at criticalenvironment.com or call 1-877-940 8741. Thanks for watching.